<clears throat> Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Today we are at the uh, Practical Farmers of uh, Iowa Grazing Conference. It's actually more than grazing. It's just a, it's a massive accumulation of speakers and topics. Of course, I'll be talking about grazing. And uh, I think they said my workshop is sold out. I mean, yeah, standing room only kind of deal. That's kind of cool. Um, they're, they're anticipating around a thousand uh, people here today and they've got work well, actually starting tomorrow is when the uh, big workshop starts but this is short course today starts at one o'clock they've got several short courses scheduled and I'm one of them today and tomorrow and then the actual conference uh, kicks off tomorrow at one o'clock if you haven't signed up you ought to check it out practical farmers in Iowa and of course time I put this video out maybe check it out for next year anyway this is quite a convention center um, it's a uh, really well done you don't have to go outside from the hotel see that walkway there um, tomorrow they're saying it's gonna be 15 below um, actually that's on Saturday morning I'm sorry two days from now snow coming in tonight um, there's quite a bit of snow up here at Des Moines but you know what? You don't have to uh, brave the elements. They've got this walkway that hooks right onto the hotel. And it's just laid out good. They've got uh, plenty of room for you know the large crowd that they're gonna have. And lots of volunteers at the registration desk in here. And uh, I wanted to show you all something. It's something you don't see much of it. I'm glad they call this a Veterans Memorial Auditorium. There it is. For good reason, check this out. So I spent about an hour in here this morning. And then on the other side, they have the Civil War, Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II. Okay, folks, these are all Iowans that served in these wars. And a lot of these guys paid the ultimate sacrifice. They gave their lives for our country. And um, yeah, it gives you a whole new um, understanding of what folks went through and sacrificed so that we could have the United States of America. I don't care what you think about the United States of America. That's your deal. But I'm gonna tell you what, I wouldn't live any other place on the planet. I've been to a bunch of them and this is the best that I have found. This, this chap right here. Um, Colonel George Everett Bud Day, he was shot down in Vietnam and he served five years and seven months as a prisoner of war in North Vietnam. And he was the only person to receive both the Medal of Honor and the Air Force Cross. Can you imagine spending five years in a uh, North Vietnam prison? Can you hear what they did to him there? They weren't getting the same care that <laughs> their prisoners were in our camps, I promise you that. But, um, yeah, this one's special to me because my first cousin, David Lynn, he was in this one. He did not come back. Kind of gives me a, a lump in my throat talking about it because David Lynn was one awesome human being. And uh, I got to meet him. He came on leave to our farm. And it was my birthday. And... Um, I don't know, it was two months later he was killed. Yeah, he was shot, he was a, uh, he's in the Marines and yeah, he got killed over there. And uh, this guy right here paid the ultimate sacrifice. He was a, he was a fighter pilot. First Lieutenant Warren Brown and um, he was on a mission Where's it at? Right here. 
Yep, there it is. You can read it. I don't need to reread it. And here's the rest of it. I'll just go down real slow so you can read it. Yeah, you know, and I read, you just tell you, it's just a super young, patriotic young guy. And, um, well, I tell you what, these people that stomp on these flags and burn them, they better not do it around me. I promise you that. I may go to jail, but I'm going to do some, they're not going to do it. They are not going to stomp on the American flag in front of me. They might, but I'm going to grab that flag and protect it. Folks, I don't care what you think about war. I don't like it. And uh, it seems like it's something that we're always going to have. We're in war right now, whether you like it or not. You know, I hope this thing doesn't escalate any more than it looks like it might. But, yeah. It looks like it's just something that we have to deal with. And... That flag right there, um, if you don't stand up for your country, you don't have a country. And right now our country is under attack. <laughs> if you've looked at the uh, southern border down there, and I, I don't get into politics, not going to, but I can tell you what's happening down there is not right. And we're going to pay the price for that. We're going to pay the price. And um, unfortunately, we have people in places of power that think it's a good thing to bring all those folks in. And we're not even, we don't know who's coming in. I can promise you this, there's some people coming in that don't have our best interest at heart. And when you don't have a border on your country, you don't have a country. So... I don't know. I hope we can get that changed and uh, take back our country because it's 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 a it's a big deal. It's a really big deal. So these people fought and paid the ultimate sacrifice. Um, I have a lot of people from the Iraq War that email me. And I didn't know it, but while they were over there fighting, they were watching some of my stuff on the net, internet. And this was just conferences I was speaking at. It was before I started my YouTube channel. And um, kind of got them through, you know, it gave them something to think about what they were gonna do when they got home. And so I feel pretty good about that. You know, these guys, these are, I personally know a guy, um, I'll just say his first name, Drew. And Drew is one of my heroes. I mean, he flew the uh, Cobra helicopter, two tours in Iraq. He was in Fallujah. I mean, he went through some stuff. And he had this beautiful wife and beautiful young children at home. And he, I mean, he could have paid the ultimate sacrifice easily. And uh, he, you know, he was his patriotic duty to go serve. And uh, Drew made it through it. And uh, I won't say your last name, Drew, you know who I'm talking about. And um, Drew gave me a painting. There's only like 500 prints made, and I got one of them. And it was of his commanding officer in, in Fallujah. And they were over the river there. And he was in his Cobra helicopter, and it just showed what they went through over there. And I just can't imagine. I just can't imagine. So, those of you all have never served in the service, me included, folks, we need to think about what these people have done for us and for our country. And the sacrifices, and uh, I read a guy over here on this other side, it was in World War I, and he said it was so cold that when he ate, he had to take his gloves off and his fingers froze. Another guy spent a night in a foxhole in the Korean War. And the only way he survived, they had two coat, they had two changes of socks. And I know this for a fact, because my neighbor's in the Korean War. He, 
when I read that over there, it reminded me, and I can give you his name because he's passed away now, and, and Kenneth would be proud for me to say his name. And his name was Kenneth Conrad. And Kenneth was my neighbor and fellow friend, and I used to go coon hunting with him. And Kenneth never talked about the Korean War, except for one night. And it was a cold, cold night. We were out in the middle of the woods, and the dogs are running a coon, tracking a coon. And he, I don't know what did it, but he started talking about it. And I'll never forget it. I wrote a whole chapter on that in my new book that's coming out. And uh, Kenneth Conrad, you are a hero. That man had two pairs of socks, and they gave each guy two pairs of wool socks. And they were in the wintertime, folks, and feet frostbit and froze and very limited rations. They, they couldn't get them into them. Under heavy fire from, you know, Chinese and the North Koreans. And they just couldn't get supplies in. And he wore those socks. I believe it was for two months. But the way you, you, you did your socks is you put one pair on and you slept in them. And the other pair you put under your armpit. So when you slept at night, or you tried to sleep, in the morning, your armpit dried out the other pair of socks. And um, Kenneth ended up, this is his war right here. This is the Korean War. Um, Kenneth came up with jungle foot and almost lost his feet. Yeah, and uh, it took him two years to get over that jungle foot. This is, uh, yeah, here it is, the winter's chill. Check this out. I read this, it reminded me of Kenneth Conrad. This guy chipped away at his hole with my entrenching tool all night just to keep warm. This, this was a bad one. Um, okay. Kenneth talks about, you know, hand-to-hand. Um, -hand. I mean, he was hand-to-hand -hand combat in the deep forest. And literally, you had to fight hand-to-hand. -hand. These guys are coming at you right in front of you. Can you imagine? And his best friend, Paid the sacrifice right next to him. Went down and, you know, Kenneth had to keep fighting. Um, Kenneth made it home from that. Married Eileen. Had a wonderful family. I think they ended up with ten kids. And, yeah, I just, I'll stop there. Kenneth Conrad, you're a hero. You'll always be a hero. Because Kenneth, any time there was a Veterans Day, any kind of military anything, if a veteran died in our community. Kenneth would go and he would be at that service and he'd make sure on Veterans Day that every veteran in, I don't know, Boone County, it was a large area, he'd go out and put flags by their gravestones. He would walk around the cemetery putting these flags, these American flags, just so nobody forgot that they were a veteran and they served to protect our country. Yeah, Kenneth Conrad, you're a patriot. Thank you so much. And my life is richer for knowing you. And David Lynn, thank you for your ultimate sacrifice. I'm going to get out of here. I'm uh, getting a little bit emotional talking about people that I know. And uh, folks, just remember that if it wasn't for these guys, there wouldn't be a United States of America. You all have a good one and take care.